Hi, I'm John Cronin, a local, uh, local election candidate uh, for next year for Southwark. And my guest today is Martin Perks. Uh, he's an anti-LTN campaigner uh, based in North London mainly. Uh, he also ran as an independent for the Bunhill Ward in... Islington. Islington. Hi, Martin. Hi. Um, right, we've got to start off with, uh, last time I saw you, you were at... Last time I saw you, you were at the... Um, uh, you were at the, uh, at, at, the, at the rally a few months ago, uh, representing uh, Islington, uh, what was it, Islington, Hackney and... Tower Hamlets. Tower Hamlets uh, rally. It was, well, it was well received, well attended. Loads of, uh, I, I, couldn't, I was amazed walking along the march, the amount of public support along the way. Uh, can you tell us uh, what, uh, what has happened to any developments or, or, or what has happened since then? Well, <clears throat> I think in terms of uh, LTNs and the politics around it, there's a number of things that have happened since. You know, more recently uh, we've had the Weavers by-election in Tower Hamlets. I think you know that one very oh, well. Oh yes, you recommended me. For, you uh, you recommended that I ran for that. Um, I might have. Did you go for it? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, one of the reasons why I didn't is because there wasn't enough time. Yeah. And also, um, bear in mind, I didn't know enough about the area to. Uh, so I was thinking to myself, if I did get elected, that um, oh, I wouldn't really give the do the residents uh, justice. So I'd much prefer to do. That's fair enough. I much prefer to do. Um, more my local area like Southwark. Hmm. I think that the reason why Weavers is interesting, well for a number of reasons, one is that the Aspire candidate, pretty much an independent party, kicked out Labour in Tower Hamlets, which has historically been a, a mix of Labour and Liberal stronghold. And that's the first it's time... The same my area, my, my area has been the same, Liberal or uh, yeah. Liberal or, uh, Labour, yeah. And it's the first time recently that uh, a Labour candidate has been kicked out in by-election by an independent. Although they're called the Aspire Party, you know, they're predominantly uh, a kind of Bangladesh outfit who have been around for a few years, but they've been well supported locally. And the councillor who won was primarily on an anti-LTN ticket. So he was, you know, campaigning predominantly to try and overturn the road closures in the Weavers ward in Tower Hamlets. It's quite significant because of that. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I heard there's rumours that there, there's going to be quite a bit of uh, aftermath from this result. I, some of the ones that are running, uh, that uh, were Labour, that were Labour are, are going to be running as uh, independents or forming another party in the next That's local true, election? That's true, yeah. So there is rumours now, you're right, that um, a number of the councillors are looking to pretty much jump ship. Whether they join Aspire or do their own thing, I'm not sure, but certainly um, there are some bad feelings amongst the entire kind of Labour council kind of membership toward how they've been handling the whole situation for many years as it happens and they all seem to be completely disaffected with the Labour Party probably generally but also the Labour Party's stance on LTNs which as people probably realise are pretty much pro road closures um, and actually there's a slight broader conversation um, that Labour are pretty much you know, in cahoots with the Tory government when it comes to road closures. Even though you expect Labour as a party to be in opposition, like Keir Starmer tries to be occasionally, uh, when it comes to road closures, they are pretty much in unison, like Khan is, Mayor of London, to the Tories' agenda to closing roads without, as we know, any public consultation. So you kind of ask yourself, where's the political op opposition in Labour? Uh, especially when, as evidenced by the outcome of the by-election weavers, there is widespread local community opposition to what's happening. So in effect, the voter, which is what's really interesting about it, it doesn't have anywhere to go, um, because there is, as I say, no political opposition to what's happening through the Conservative policy. So it's a really interesting moment, I think. Uh, uh, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, what I've noticed, in, uh, what I've noticed uh, even in uh, the spies the LTNs, in other issues as well, like um, infilling estates and all the rest of it in my area, 
that uh, it seems to be it seems to be a pattern going on that that they're just rushing things through and uh, there's no consultation. They just uh, it seems to be a pattern the same as uh, same as uh, LTNs. I think that's right because you know more generally <clears throat> we can be critical of many councils and the LTNs are a great example of this because they keep running schemes through without any real meaningful consultation. It's always that the fact that they know what's best for us sort of attitude when it comes to politics. But of course what we've shown is actually local people are in uproar over many of these issues because they directly affect how they live and LTNs and other issues elsewhere do the same. And I think it's a real problem that a lot of councils and councillors are coming up against more and more that actually if you dig between dig beneath the surface uh, a lot of people are very disgruntled about how their lives are being overturned or even micromanaged uh, in their everyday sort of you know day-to-day -day lives and business. It seems like initially they seem to have used the uh, the, lock the COVID lockdown as an ideal opportunity to bring these things in and an excuse oh we couldn't consult anyone because of the COVID crisis. Yeah that, that's certainly the case with LTNs um, especially where Boris encouraged a kind of a land grab or a cash grab if you will by every council to take up his kind of offer of 250 million kind of transport budget to bring in LTNs without any consultation. Um, that was all under the excuse of COVID of course um, because apparently it was a real urgent issue to kind of you know kind of make people get out of their cars but of course incidentally people wanted to stay in their cars because they fe feared you know going on public transport for example yeah. you surely you're surely more safe uh, in your own car than yeah, well, yeah, it was uh, public transport it was felt at the time yes but yes yeah, so <clears throat> you know what Boris or Grant Shapps did at the time was a deliberate plea for authorities to take up the offer of as they call it, active lives to encourage people to walk and cycle more especially during the winter as it happened at the time but obviously people didn't want to do that. Now uh, 18 months on what's happened is that Boris uh, wrote a report or his minions wrote a report saying the LTM scheme has been pretty much successful now what they want to do is give councils more grants, 30% more funding, but with a proviso, they must implement every LTN scheme that the government is setting them out to do. Otherwise, what has will happen, and they stated in their report, they will penalise councils for not doing so. The only proviso is that every council must, must now carry out a meaningful consultation but we can argue what yeah. a consultation means. Exactly. That's exactly. a conversation. I know. Uh, I was I was going to say to you in my area in Lambeth. Uh, obviously, they took uh, they took the the council to court some time ago, and they they lost the case. The, uh, the council were quite buoyant about it, so they got to put more LTNs in. Or the rest of it. The judge um, advised the um, one Lambeth organisation to go for an appeal because yeah. he was confident that uh, it could get overturned so uh, there's hope there I think there's hope but it's a, it's a tricky situation because while I wish the case you know kind of overturns the LTNs but I don't really like the fact that we're asking judges you know who themselves are ultimately unelected officials yeah, of course. to do the work for us to do the bargaining for the public because you know in other areas the public have been quite vocal in their opposition to LTNs although that in itself is difficult because proponents of LTNs argue that actually the majority still kind of outnumber the people marching on the demos um, but I rather think it's actually the silent majority of the people we need to appeal to yeah. however it's very tricky politically to try and get the public out as it were in opposition to things like LTNs, even though I do think a lot of people will feel the impact in terms of how they can't navigate their local community or businesses are being further restricted through lack of time for deliveries and all sorts of things. Covid fatigue or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. but I, I will be honest that 
in many areas, um, frustratingly, the public does still remain fairly silent over some of these issues. Silent sort of majority, you'd think. Well, it is, Maybe, yeah. but I would automatically think the public would be more vocal in its opposition to LTNs, but actually, as it turns out, it's not always the case. Why is that? That's an interesting question. Um, there is a counter to that, because if you go to Ealing, who only two weeks ago, the public was offered the chance to, uh, you know, kind of give their views on the nine LTNs that Ealing Council had implemented, and seven out of, ten, seven out of nine of them were rejected in a, in a vote. Uh, where I think over 70% of the public said that we reject these LTN schemes because obviously they're impacting on our local lives who can't get around anymore, you know, restricted in terms of where we can drive and so on. So that is an example where the public have been vocal, but then we characterise, or sorry, contrast that into the inner city of London, for example, where there's a real Labour yeah. stronghold in Hackney or Islington. Yes. Um, it seems to be a different story. Why is that? Because um, one of the things that I, just to finish, what I found when I was campaigning myself in May, in Bunhill, in Islington, which again is a Labour stronghold, was that although turnout was 30-40% um, by election, I met many, many local people, predominantly working class people, who were incredibly angry about LTNs, but also angry about being ignored politically for many, many years as it happens. I mean, I met one woman who had never been canvassed by a councillor for 20 years. I knocked on the door. Completely ignored, but even though there is boiling resentment uh, in terms of how a lot of people have been marginalised and forgotten about, when it comes to elections around issues like LTNs, um, those people I'm not so vocal. Uh, I'll tell you what I noticed when I was going around, um, when I was campaigning. Uh, feedback I was getting, uh, 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 oh, well, no, one lady, she turned around and said, um, she saw my leaf and said, oh, oh you, 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 you don't get uh, much here. She said, uh, this is a rock for her. I didn't know what she meant by that, but now seeing what's been happening with the uh, developers and all the rest of the way the council works I can see what she's getting at there about the corruption element and all the rest of it and what she what she was saying uh, you, uh, 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 I don't know if that, I don't know if this is in uh, I don't know if it's in other boroughs as well I, I think I think Lambeth is the same thing as well they just want to push things through and all the rest of it I think you agenda. know mm. there's always going to be uh, a bit of money talks kind of thing yeah but to me, that's not really the issue, to be honest. Yeah. Um, you know, because you could end up being really cynical about how things operate. The real issue is, the real issue is for me, is actually to kind of get your head around actually how politically there is little opposition to what is being dished out by, for example, the Tory government by people who should really be representing their communities better than they are, namely Labour. Right. So, you think they're too comfortable in their seats, do you think? Well, it's 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 a bit of both, in the sense that Labour councils, for example, Hackney or Islington, um, seem to be, in a, in a strange kind of way, doing everything that the Tory government asked it to, to do. So be it, you know, LTNs, to keep on that example, yeah. When Boris says he wants to encourage more active lives, travel, as in walk, get out and walk, you know, pretty much er eradicate motorised transport as best they can, who follows it? Khan in Labour's, uh, uh, you know, mayoral capacity, and pretty much every Labour council follows suit. Now, in my old way of thinking about politics, you always thought the Labour Party would exploit the fact they're in opposition to Tory policy, Rather, at the moment, they seem to be direct puppets of everything the Tory party asked them to do. And in fact, the Labour Party in councils like Isn't and Hackney even go one step or three steps further and end up further bashing the public 
and working out new ways to impose, you know, zero carbon, as I call it, austerity, on everyday living standards. So, and, and, the, and the people that affect the most are, are obviously the most vulnerable in the working class. Yeah. Oh, I think politics is, uh, now, now has become more and more about class. I think you're right. I would say it's class in a slightly different sense as we would once have known it because it's now a class which is a sort of a, an elite technocratic managerial class who are characterised by experts and bureaucrats and people who run your councils who predominantly think they know what's best for you. Now the people they point the finger at predominantly are, are the working class who evidently don't know how to live, you know, don't know how to save who drive cars because it's luxury, because they just want to out of, you know, no no reason but just, you know, whiz around the roads. Yeah. Of course, you know, most people have good reason to own vehicles because they are convenient, you know, allow them to do many things they could never do on foot. But of course, the separation between the technocrats who think they know what's best and the, the working class is about finger pointing and like you say, hammering the ball to kind of carry the load for excuses that politicians have kind of got away with making about providing better infrastructure, transportation, I'm not against all kinds of transportation as it happens, and you know, energy. But instead all they do, and a bugbear of mine, is talk about zero carbon, you know, net zero and making London, you know, net zero by 2030 or 50 or whatever it is. You know, don't tell you how much it's gonna cost the Exactly. And it's a nonsensical thing because yeah. For me, all that really does is actually give people like Boris or Khan a sense of purpose or legitimacy. But as you say, without really worrying about the technical details of how much stuff this is going to cost or how much real austerity will be imposed on people when they figure out they've got to, you know, fund a, a ten thousand pound, uh, you know, a, a, a combined heat boiler, uh, which no one can afford. So I think that what we're seeing is. A division of the technocrats who themselves are looking for things to legitimize, re legitimize their purpose in a way, and often what that ends up being is pointing fingers at you and me to say, You don't know how to live, right? Because the way you live right now uh, is, is, you know, doing damage to everyone else around you, which is kind of nonsense. Um, and it also really belittles people's, you know, lives and experience in terms of what they really need and value, which often these politicians and councils are nowhere near providing them. That's right. Okay, uh, just to round off, um, I was going to say, I saw you uh, I saw you a little while ago at the Battle of Ideas Festival. Uh, how, 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 how did you find it? That was uh, the first uh, event I've been to in public, like you, I'm sure, for about yeah. 18 months. Uh -huh. um, it was amazing to finally hear other people argue, debate, sometimes quite lively, yeah. you know, in the same room. You forget what it is to be kind of human sometimes, to actually listen to figure out things together. But, you know, there's a buzz oh, of, yeah, there a was, lot of people. Yeah. You know, finding issues. I met, I met, lo I met lots, of, lots of lovely people that Good. I've seen on, the, that I've seen on <laughs> YouTube or yeah. whatever. It was great to see them in person. Yeah, and I think also good about it was that you might not always agree with what everyone's saying in the room, but it's one of the most unique occasions where you're allowed to say it. Yeah. And you, when you say it, when you say something, you should also be expected to be questioned for it as well, right? Of course. So that's the whole point, because, you know, we're adult. Yes. Um, and I think that, you know, goes across all kinds of politics at the moment, that a lot of people actually feel they're not able to speak out anymore to say things they really believe or mean yeah, yeah. because they're going to get shot down and i think we've seen that quite a lot in the whole yeah. debate about ltns and zero carbon economy that we really do deserve a public forum where people can speak their minds without being afraid to do so that's very right. important which uh, i mean there's another event coming up on the 9th and 10th of october that's on right. the saturday and sunday um well, what well, we're saying it now of October. Uh, well, why we're saying this now is because if you visit the website, uh, there's early birds, uh, there's early bird tickets uh, available. Uh, you can book for one day or two days, and uh, the prices are forty-five pound for one day and seventy-five pound for two days for adults. 
and concessions is uh, £40 uh, for both days and £25 for one day. Fantastic. Uh, this is at um, the Church House Westminster and I presume it'll be start at the usual time, 10 o'clock to yeah. 6 o'clock and there's a number yeah. of, and there's a number of, uh, a lot, lot of choice of debates covering a lot of, a wide range of topics. So um, I advise you to go and visit the Battle of Ideas website. Uh, okay. And uh, thanks, thanks for the interview, Martin. And uh, yeah, Good luck thank you for your well. time. Good. Thank you. Thank you.